Roman amphitheaters used for bullfights every summer. Roman aqueducts that still carry water. Roman baths filled with bathers. A surprising number of Roman structures are still used for their original purposes today. Some, like the aqueduct that feeds the Trevi Fountain, are well known. Others, like most of the dozens of working Roman bridges scattered across the former empire, are obscure. Famous or otherwise, these structures are living connections to a vanished world. Let's take a look at a few fascinating examples. We'll start with amphitheaters. Although gladiators and beast hunts are a thing of the past, a handful of the best-preserved Roman arenas are still in use. The imposing amphitheater of El Gem, Tunisia, shown here, houses a music festival each summer. The Roman amphitheater of Pula, Croatia, likewise, frequently hosts concerts. In the interests of time, however, we'll focus here on three well-known examples. The first of these is the arena of Verona, probably the most famous amphitheater in Italy after the Colosseum. It was about half the Colosseum's size, with seating for almost 30,000 spectators. A medieval earthquake destroyed the arena's outer ring of walls and corridors. But the rest remains intact enough to host music festivals, and has become one of Italy's premier venues for grand-style opera. Our next example is the Amphitheater of Arla in southern France. During the Middle Ages, the amphitheater was completely built over, becoming a fortified neighborhood with two churches and more than 200 homes. These structures were cleared away during the early 19th century, and the amphitheater was returned to its original function. It now hosts everything from concerts to bullfights. The Arena of Nîmes, perhaps the best preserved of all Roman amphitheaters, is a short distance from Arla. Like its neighbor, the Nîmes Arena became a miniature town during the Middle Ages, and was restored to public use in the 19th century. It hosts events routinely today, and has become a fixture of the bullfighting circuit. From amphitheaters, we move on to aqueducts. There are quite a few Roman aqueducts still in use, though virtually all have been reconstructed at least once since antiquity. We'll discuss three of the most prominent examples in a moment. Before we do, however, I want to briefly mention the dams that sometimes stood at their headwaters. A few of these dams, like the example shown here, which is near Merida, Spain, are still holding water and irrigating crops today. Proceeding to the aqueducts themselves, we'll start with the famous aqueduct of Segovia, Spain. As is the case with almost all ancient aqueducts, most of the channel is underground. But, just outside the Roman city, the Segovia aqueduct vaulted over a broad valley on a magnificent stone bridge almost a kilometer long. A section of the Great Bridge was demolished during a medieval siege. The damage was repaired, however, and the aqueduct continued to be Segovia's primary source of water until the 19th century. It remains in use today. Our next example is no longer in service, but was used until relatively recently. This is the Aqueduct of Valens, a landmark in modern Istanbul. The aqueduct bridge shown here stood near the terminus of Roman Constantinople's gargantuan water supply system. It was repaired by both Byzantine emperors and Ottoman sultans, and was only replaced when the city's modern water mains were installed. The most famous Roman aqueduct still in use is Rome's Aqua Virgo. Built under the auspices of Augustus, the Aqua Virgo was the only one of Rome's aqueducts to remain in operation through the Middle Ages. The water channels were restored and enlarged during the Renaissance, and the famous Trevi Fountain was built to mark its main outlet. The Aqua Virgo no longer supplies Rome with drinking water, but it still courses through the Trevi and the other historic fountains of central Rome. There are a number of well-preserved baths scattered around the former empire, the most famous of which are the Forum and Stabian Baths of Pompeii, pictured here. But only a bare handful of Roman bath complexes are still in any kind of use today. 
The most famous are in Bath, England. During the Roman era, Bath was Aquae Sulis, famous for its sacred hot springs. The Romans channeled water from the springs into a large bathing complex, centered on a lead-lined pool. This pool, adjoined by smaller pools and covered by a vaulted roof, was used until the collapse of Roman authority in Britain. By the early Middle Ages, it lay in ruins. The Roman pools, however, were uncovered and restored in the late 19th century. The lead-lined Great Pool became the centerpiece of a grand neoclassical bathhouse. Bathers used it until the 1970s, when deadly bacteria were discovered in the water. The pool and the rest of the Roman baths, however, remain a major tourist attraction today. Our next example, in what is now southwestern Turkey, was also built around natural hot springs. The water of these springs, however, was cloudy with dissolved limestone, which settled into the snow-white travertine terraces that give the site its Turkish name, Pamukkale, the Cotton Castle. In some places, the travertine terraces have swallowed the ruins of Hierapolis, the Roman city and health spa that stood beside the smoking springs. But the sacred pool from which the springs bubbled, which lay between a temple of Apollo and the main bath complex of Hierapolis, has changed little since antiquity. The Temple of Apollo collapsed in the Middle Ages, littering the bottom of the pool with columns and capitals. The pool itself, however, is still full of warm spring water and still teems with sunburnt tourists. Another Roman bath complex still in use today stands in the forested hills of northeastern Algeria, just outside the town of Kenchla. This is Hammam Salahin, known to the Romans as Aquae Flaviani, the imperial baths. The baths date to the first century AD, when Kenchla was the Roman city of Mascula. Like our other examples, they were built over natural hot springs, which were channeled into two pools and ringed by porticos and service buildings. The bath buildings have been restored several times, but the two central pools have remained unchanged for almost 2,000 years, and are still used much as they were in the Roman era. Temples converted into churches provide some of the best instances of Roman buildings still used for something analogous to their original purpose. There are several dozen examples, of which a handful are well preserved. The Maison Calais, in Nîmes, is one of the most famous. Others include the Temple of Minerva in Assisi, the Temple of Augustus in Pula, Croatia, and the Temple of Augustus in Livia in Vienna, France. Here, however, I'll focus on just two converted temples, both in the city of Rome. The first, admittedly, is no longer used as a church. In fact, it hasn't been a church since the 19th century when it was restored to its present state. But, for a millennium or so, this building, originally dedicated, it is thought, to victorious Hercules, served as a church, and was so preserved from ruin and stone robbing. Though a small building, this was a very expensive one, constructed of the finest Greek marble. It is not perfectly preserved. The entablature is vanished, along with the original roof, but it is one of the Eternal City's most remarkable examples of urban continuity. The greatest example of that continuity, of course, is the Pantheon, the best preserved and most impressive of all Roman buildings. Since I've dedicated two whole videos to the Pantheon, I'll refer you to those on the details of this wonderful building. Suffice it to say, that the Pantheon owes its unique state of preservation not only to the awesome strength of its concrete walls and dome, but also to the fact that it's been a church for more than 14 centuries. The Pantheon, in other words, has always been a living building, revered first as a shrine of the gods and emperors, then as a sanctuary of Mary and the martyrs, and always as a place that seemed to promise or prefigure heaven. For the location of every building mentioned here, check out the map linked in the description. 
If you liked this video, you might enjoy my forthcoming book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, Frequently Asked Questions About the Ancient Greeks and Romans. You'll find more information in the description. Since I'm always looking for new material, feel free to let me know about other Roman buildings still in use in the comments. And, as always, thanks for watching.